Hello everybody, welcome back to another AI video. In this one, we're in Shaker AI and I have an amazing AI art and image generator to show you. This generator has thousands, and I literally mean it, thousands of models that you can use for free. So if you're into AI image generation and you wanna get the latest or you wanna you know, fine tune it and get that exact look, this is the one for you here. And better yet, you get 200 credits a day for free and no watermarks. So this is the one to show you. Let's get into it. All right, and just quickly want to note here before we roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty, there is a paid membership option if you so choose. If you need more than 200 daily credits, maybe you're a game developer, designer, or a comic maker, you can always just click on this membership button over here on the left side and you'll see here they've got an eight buck a month and 20 buck a month plan. That gives you 10,000 fast tokens every month or 30,000 fast tokens if you need lots of tokens. That said, I will note here that on top of all of the models and things I'm gonna show you here, the paid plans give you access to an additional 5,000 premium models. So this, this site just has so many models to choose from. And not only that, they have a number of globally exclusive models that you can't find anywhere else, even on websites like Civit AI, for example. So keep that in the back of your head while we go through this. Let's go. All right, so to kick it off, you need to go to shaker.ai. Link will be in the description below. It's free to sign up. You can use Discord, your Google uh, email account, or your own email, whatever works. Once you're logged in, you're gonna see this page here, and it's pretty straightforward. There's a few ways that you can go ahead and start cooking. The first thing though I wanna show you is all of the models. This is crazy. I'm just gonna go ahead and just slowly just slide down the page here and you're gonna see that there are models upon models upon models upon models. There are literally thousands of them that you can select from. Variety is the spice of life or something like that. I don't know what it is, but there you go. All of them are there. Now, if you're looking for something in particular, I generally go to one of these three tabs most of the time. Recommended is the default one and they will give you their recommended choices. If you wanna go to popular and there's comfort in numbers, <laughs> here are all the ones that are most popular and then you can see the number of reviews they've got, the number of times they've been run, all of those different things here. And it gives you a quick you know, image so you can see kinda of what you can expect when you click on it. And then newest, this one here is Another one that I go to because I like to sign to see what's coming out and you know what people have released. Like this hand-drawn style XL right here. This looks like something I would totally use. This Mario Bro one with the 3D style also looks like one I would use. But those are the generally the three things that I would click on first. If you still don't find what you want, you can click on this little down arrow here and you can see all these different styles here. So if you're looking for one that's you know food related or logo and icon related, you can click on that and it will take you to models that are specific for that. Grimoires and books, I like the name of that one. And finally guys, if there's something you're looking for in particular, a particular model or a username, you can just type it in here. So if I typed in something like anime, I would click on that, hit enter, and then I've got 265 that I can choose from. Crazy stuff. Okay, now you've seen enough of that. Let's get in and start creating. All right, creating is very simple. You can either click on the model or click on AI generator over here on the left side. I'm gonna go ahead and select this super control map, Yukengi delicate model. You'll see here it's opened up another tab here that allows me to go in and take a look specifically at the model. Here it is. So we've got some example images. You can dig in and see exactly what's going on here. If I click on expand all, there's, e wow, look at that. There's even a, uh, a whole bunch of different checkpoints and I don't know, crazy stuff. You can go in and dig into it if you want, but to start creating, all you gotta do here is go to the right side and click on run model. Once you do that, another tab opens up and now we are into my canvas. You'll see here, I've already got two images created. So I've already made two images on this account. So you'll see here, two images down, 196 credits still remaining. This is awesome. I can cook up a ton of content and not have to worry about just running into errors or download restrictions or watermarks, any of that stuff. So here we go. Now we've gone ahead, we've clicked on it here. I wanna generate something. So let's go ahead and in the generate tab here, I'm gonna type what I want. So I want a, a pretty lady with big eyes looking ahead, I don't know, blonde hair, anime style, something like that. I don't know, I, I mean, just generic stuff here. 
but I just want to see what it comes up with. Down a little further, you'll see here that it has selected the model that we wanted it to and that it's using Stable Diffusion 1.5. So you can always go in there and just double check. I, you can add in a LoRa if you want. I'm going to not do that, but I want you to know that it is available as well as with references. So if you have an image that you want to use, go ahead and click on this plus sign and add in an image reference if you're trying to, you know, get something to look like something else. All right, here we go. Other things here real quickly here, sampler methods, lots of them here to choose from. I can't go into details about all of them, but I can pretty much guarantee you they're pretty much all here. Same with sampling steps. We have a default to 20, but if we want more, we can go ahead and add in more. That said, very importantly, we can make some changes down here, particularly image size. It defaults to 1024 by 768, but you can do 2048 by 2048 in a variety of other sizes. I'm going to keep it on the default because it's just a little bit quicker there and the less pixels, the faster. And then more, I guess, critically here, look at this image number. It's set to two, but I can go ahead and jack that up to four. So if I did that, it'll use eight credits, two credits per image, but I am now generating, if I zoom out a little bit here, four images at a time. So I'm going to cook these up, come back when it's done, then I'll show you some next steps, how we can do some refinements and use some of the tools that are built into the platform. All right, welcome back. So let's see what it cooked up for us. It cooked up these four images. I said a pretty lady with big eyes. She, yeah, she has big eyes. Blonde hair. This is blondish, almost like platinum blonde, which is fine. Anime style. Okay, so it's a pretty basic... Um, uh, prompt, but that's all I wanted to show you. I mean, I don't want to, you guys are probably better at prompting than I am. I'm just going to close this gallery here, click on that X, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now, a couple things. I'm going to, before I click on and show you some of the AI tools, watch this. I'm going to go ahead and grab this image here, and I'm going to put that one here. And then I'm going to grab, let's say I like this one here. This one's nice. I'm going to put that one here, and maybe I'll put that one here. What I'm basically showing you here is the infinite canvas of this this platform it is the only one i've seen that does this but literally you can rearrange the images as you see fit if you are a comic artist or if you create comic books or you're storyboarding and you want to make sure that your images are in order this platform has that built into it and again i think it's the only one that does this so kudos to them for thinking that up so there we go we've got our images now let's take a look at this so i'm going to click on this one here and when I do that, if I want to download it, I could just click on this little down arrow and presto, I've got it. There you go. It's downloaded. And if I open it, check this out. Let's go ahead and click on open file, Curtis. Opened it. There you go. That's the image. Notice how there's no watermark. This is very important. Most AI image generators that allow you to try it out for free come with watermarks. And some of them, I'm looking at you mid-journey, <laughs> don't even give you a free trial. They don't even let you try one without paying for it. So... Very cool stuff, and again, this is kind of cool that they're doing this. So there you go. So there we go. We've downloaded it, but we'll click on it. Now look at this. We've got some options. All right, so let's go a little further here. If I hover over this image here, you'll see it says very subtle, and this is basically <laughs> very subtle. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a good play on words. But basically, if you click on this, it's going to take the image, and then it's just going to apply subtle changes, little changes to it so that, you know, it's largely the same image, but, you know, with a little bit different. This is very similar to other AI image generators like Midjourney that allow you to just basically re-roll them with minor changes. That's not really what I want to do here, but look at this. If I click on prompt, here you go. This will give you the exact prompt that was used and all of the things that went into it. So I put in there, pretty lady with big eyes looking ahead, blonde hair, anime style. Then you'll see here it's a, it adds in one girl, bangs, blue eyes, blush, braid, closed mouth, earrings, eyelashes. It added all of that in on top of my very simple prompt. So sometimes the simpler prompts are the way to go, and then you just let the, let the platform do its thing. Also, if you want to figure out what model was used, so if I click on this one here and I click on match model, it will go ahead and analyze it, and it will say, hey, this is the model that we use, and it's called Mex Line 6. So if you're ever not sure how you generated an image, click on Match Model. Lastly, reference images is very important. If I click on this image, for example, and I want to generate another image on top of this, but I want it to look like this one, simply clicking on Reference right here, you'll see here that it's gone ahead and added in an image reference, and it's also given it a certain... Um, similarity rating. So you'll see here it's at 0.5. You can click on that and you can adjust that higher or lower depending on how much you want the image that you're going to generate to use this as a reference. So 
for example, if I have a bulldog and I want my next image to look exactly like my bulldog image reference, I would put in 1.0. If I wanted to look only a little bit like it, I'd use a lot lower number. So those are just some of the basic things. Now we're going to go up here to the top toolbar, look at in-painting, upscaling, out-painting, and restyling, amongst other things. Let's get into that. All right, so the next thing I want to show you are some of the tools up here at the top. In-painting, upscaling, out-painting, restyling, etc. So let's go ahead and select this image right here. The first thing I'm going to show you as I zoom in here is in-painting. Now, in-painting, basically, for those of you that don't know, it basically segments your image. So it's going to take all, it's going to take the image, analyze it, and segment it. And then you'll see here, as I hover over, that it's segmented in this part here, the eyes, for example, the, uh, you know, the irises and so forth, they're all segmented. So what I could do is I could select, like, the eye right here, and then I could maybe select this eye, and then you'll see as I hover out there, purple. Now, I could go over here to in-paint and say red eyes, and I can... Go ahead and click on in paint it'll cost me four free credits and it'll basically return this over here so i don't need to do it because i'll just show you what it does it went ahead and i did it and here it is red eyes here red eyes there so instead of the blue eyes that we had originally it would go ahead and create the red colors or whatever it is you're looking to do so that's the first thing i'm going to exit out of that let's go over to this image here i'm going to select it the next thing is very simple but it's upscaling right now it's at 1024 by 768 but if I want to double the, you know, pixel count, let's just go to 2x. There you go. I can go ahead and I can click on upscale and I can even go ahead and adjust the creativity. So if I like it the way it is, I keep it low. If I want it completely different, I could increase that. So you can go ahead and use that as you see fit. I'm going to click out of that. You can experiment with that as you see fit, of course. The next thing here is out painting. Basically, in painting works inside the image. Out painting extrapolates outside the image so basically very similar stuff if i click on this image here and i click on out painting i can go ahead and add things outside of it so if i wanted to maybe go ahead with anime style and then i wanted something in the background uh dragon in the background i can go ahead and do that i can go ahead and out paint it it will go ahead and extrapolate out and put a dragon in the background in fact why don't we try and see what happens all right, so welcome back. So we got a dragon in the background. If I zoom in here, here's an example. We got a dragon basically biting her head. How cool is that one? So that one's pretty good. This one here is kind of not really biting it. It's just sort of like a, a headpiece. And then this one here, a little more subtle. The dragon is in the background, but it's mostly obfuscated by her. But that is a very cool, subtle look. So that's what out painting does. The other thing I should mention for you out painters is you may want to adjust the size of the image. So you can actually go in here and manually dial in an image size. So if I want a 1920 and I wanted the height to be 1080, sort of like the standard um, YouTube thumbnail, for example, I would just go ahead and do that and then make sure that it is uh, the way I want it. And then I would click on generate. So something else to think about. Let's go ahead now and look at restyle. All right, let's try out restyle. So I'm going to click on this image here where the dragon seems to be eating her hair. Awesome. I'll click on restyle up here in the top in the toolbar. And then presto, you'll see here that I can go ahead now and add in some more info. So if I want to make her green eyed instead of blue eyed, for example, I just type in green eyes. Oops, I thought I'd type in green eyes. <laughs> something like that. Hit add in a period just to make it grammatically correct. I can adjust the strength. I'm going to leave that alone, but you can toggle that as you see fit. Very importantly though, we can swap out the model. So you know that when I click on choose a checkpoint under model, this here was the original model, but maybe I want to try out this U Fantasy 2.5D model. For example, there's hundreds of models you can try for. Just scroll and try out all of them if you want to but i'm going to click on this one just to save a little time here and presto we've swapped in a new model this is awesome everything else i'm going to leave the same but you of course can change the sampler method the sampling steps if you're an advanced uh you know ai image generator or art user kind of thing go ahead and do what you need to do i'm going to go with that i'm going to click uh four images i'm going to click on change watch this it's going ahead and it's launching the change I'll come back when it's done, show you what we got. All right, welcome back. So let's see what we got with the restyle. Honestly, first look here, this is awesome. Look at this. This is a different style here. The dragon's in the background. If we zoom in here, the eyes are green like I changed them. This is fantastic stuff. It's also using the new model, and it was literally that easy, guys. So I'm going to click on exit, 
awesome. The last couple things I want to show you are just up here. They're very basic. You'll probably have used these in the past. It's kind of like Photoshop, but inside of the AI tool. If you want to remove the background, it is literally one click. The background is gone. The lady and the dragon is there. I would click out on exit and then boom, hit the download button. You're done. If you want to smart remove, this allows you to remove particular parts of the image. So I'd click on this image here, click on smart remove, and then look here. I can go ahead and just sort of drill in here and decide what I want to remove. You get a lasso option and a marquee tool. So if I wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to move the remove the bottom part here with her shoulders and have just her head, I would do that. And then I would click on remove. It's very simple to do. I'm not gonna do that because it's just very, very simple. Lastly, but not least, you can crop the image Again, if you want to make a different size, maybe I want to crop it. I could just pull in one of the corners here, or I could pull up maybe right here, and then crop it right to her neck, for example, where I just have a headshot, and then just hit, uh, hit the little scissors there, and bang, we've gone ahead and cropped an image. It's very simple, easy to do. Finally, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so these are just some of the things you can do with Shaker AI. This is one of my favorite if not my favorite AI image and art generator. This is a tutorial that shows you all the different parts here and all the things that I've showed you. Keep in mind, we've only used really one and a half models. If you have, there are thousands of models to try out. And if you ever get lost, click on the tutorial button up here at the top here and go nuts and just go ahead and read them and yeah, dig in. So there you go, guys. This is Shaker AI. It's awesome. It's free to try. You get 200 credits a day for free, no watermarks. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.